Hello and welcome to album review number 27. Today I'm going to be reviewing Torn Hearts by Vanagraph Generator. This was released in 1971 but I'm reviewing it today to celebrate the 50 year anniversary of their first album, The Air Soul Grey Machine. I've also done the same with Yes and King Crimson. I've reviewed their one of my personal favourite album uh, in celebration of the 50 year anniversary of their first album so I'm, that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, Pont Arts was actually the first Vanagraph Generator album I ever listened to, um, mainly because most people that I, I sort of looked up online, the, most people that talked about it seemed to agree that this was the best one. Uh, and A Plague of Lighthouse Keepers, the third track, uh, they, which takes up the entire second side, was uh, actually the first Vanagraph Generator song I ever listened to. And if I was to introduce someone to Vanagraph Generator, uh, making them listen to, uh, or suggesting that they listen to A Plague of Lighthouse Keepers would definitely not be the first song that I'd suggest. I'd definitely say something, you know, like maybe, maybe Still Life, maybe an album like that, maybe Killer, a song like Killer would definitely be more of a, uh, a more of a better song to sort of introduce them to, to don't want to start them in too heavy. But Plague of Lighters Keepers is pretty much as Van Graaff Generator as you can get. Uh, and I really liked it. So, anyway, Pawn Hearts, like I said, was released in 1971. It has three tracks on it. The first two tracks are called Lemmings and Man Erg, which are about, both about 10, 11 minutes long. Then the third track is A Plague of Lighters Keepers, which is 23 minutes and takes up the entire second side. This was the second album to feature the classic lineup of David Jackson, Peter Hamill, Hugh Banton, and Guy Evans, which who would also go on to do God Love, Still Life, World Record, and Present. So, a good few of their albums were in this specific lineup. Uh, but let's just get right into it. Lemmings track one begins with a very, uh, I'd say, seductive acoustic guitar, sort of wee melody. It sort of sucks you in right from the beginning, that acoustic guitar. It's very interesting, and I really, really like it. Uh, and I've always really liked it. After that, you get a wee bit of keyboard coming in, uh, a wee bit of saxophone, and then the song begins, and right from the beginning, it's sinister. The whole album, there's almost no breaks in terms of the Van der Graaff, like that dark, sinister feel. There are some kind of more uplifting bits, but like I said, if I was going to introduce someone to Van der Graaff Generator, this would not be the album I start with, especially if they're not in like, that kind of music. Uh, but I just love it. Uh, so yeah, then you get the bass pedals. Well, bass guitar. I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, I think I think the album was recorded with bass guitar by Hugh Banton, uh, and then what they play it live. I think he does bass pedals. Uh, it's absolutely pouring, by the way. I don't know if you can hear. Um, and then I really like the the lyrics. It starts in Peter Hamill's voice. Uh, that high pitched sort of. That singing he does, it's really, really atmospheric and it's really, really interesting. Uh, the song just be begins really sinister and really, really seductively, like I said, and I really, really like it. Uh, after that, we get a kind of sinister, slightly discordant sort of saxophone. And then the song, I guess you get a kind of more of a rock sort of beat coming in. And it's kind of sense days like that, but the lyrics are quite bleak. I'm not 100% sure what the lyrics are about, but it seems to be about sort of people just following sort of like anger and hatred and that sort of, those sort of ideologies. Uh, the song's quite, uh, it's not too kind of crazy up until the mid, mid section which is called Cog, which is absolutely nuts and uh, the, the really dark lyrics there and Peter Hamill squealing at the end of certain lines uh, and absolutely like, hor I almost say horrible but it's, it's so great. The, the so sinister and discordant keyboard sounds it's just uh you know some bands they try to go kind of crazy and they do kind of stuff like that and it it doesn't really work but the reason i love van der Graaff generator so much is because they throw in so much discordant noise and it all blends perfectly in my opinion it's just amazing uh after cog we get uh it, there still is time and after, um which is your Hamill sings um bit of a kind of drum solo um with some piano going on after that 
Uh, after that, the lyrics become a lot more positive. Uh, so like there is hope, and we can we can uh, decide to be better and things like that. And I think that's really a really nice touch. Um, also, quite like the really kind of atmospheric, ambient, but sinister outro. And it's just a fantastic uh, first song on the album. Uh, Lemmings is amazing, and it's definitely grown on me more and more over time, uh, especially the lyrics. Um, but that cog section always just it's, it always gets me, especially in the studio version. Um, track two, I'm not talking about the. I think in some US versions, uh, theme one was included on the album, the cover version of like the Radio One theme they did, but I'm not going to be talking about that. I'm just 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 talking about the main three uh, on the album I bought and the vinyl I bought. There's three tracks, so that's the one I'm going to talk about. Um, Man Erg begins with quite beautiful and quite uplifting uh, piano sounds. Again, I'm not 100% sure what the lyrics of Man Erg about, are about. Um, I think, it, in my, my interpretation though, has, has always just sort of been about, uh, just about, like, identity and, like, who we are and that sort of thing. And, uh, like, we're not, we're not these magical, amazing people and that's, and that's okay, sort of thing. That's my interpretation. I'm not 100% sure and I'm probably wrong, but that's fine. Uh, it's really beautiful the first few minutes, uh. It's actually quite lullaby-ish, but um, the thing about Vanagraf, if you know anything about Vanagraf January, if you get a bit that's too happy, there's going to be a really, really dark bit right after it, and after this squeal of, I think, saxophone noise, um, we get this fantastic 11-8 section, the middle section, and it is absolutely crazy, and the first time I listened to it, I was like, whoa, it even got me a wee bit, and I'd listened to a Plague of Lighthouse Keepers, and I just wasn't expecting it, uh, it's it's absolutely mental this eleven eight section and it, the way it speeds up and then slows down is absolutely amazing. Then the rest of the, for the most of the song it is quite uplifting and quite beautiful in that way. Um, but that just that one middle section is just absolutely psychotic and it's it's fantastic. So the first two tracks on the album are excellent. Um, and they obviously uh, both about 10 or 11 minutes and they both uh, take up the whole first side. Um, whether or not this was the first prog rock album that did this kind of format of two short songs and a long song or a long song and two short ones, I don't know. If someone can if someone can tell me uh, that like, this was released in 1971, obviously uh, probably the most famous album, that had, prog rock album that has a long one and then two short ones or vice versa is Close to the Edge by Yes. But whether pe whether Van der Graaf Generator were the first band to do that, I don't know. But um, it's 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 a good it's a it's a it's a good song format. It's good to hear kind of two ten minute more compact ones and then a a, a full side. Um, quite a few bands have, have done it since. Um, obviously Yes did it twice. Uh, anyway, track three second side is a Plague of Light Housekeepers, which along with. Scorched Earth is probably my favourite Van der Graaf Generator song. Well, I probably just edge Scorched Earth, Scorched Earth, even though Scorched Earth is so optimistic. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's optimistic, but it's very major key throughout lots of it. It's very musically uplifting, even though it's it's crazy and it's mental and all that. It's got all this like, absolutely loud, harsh stuff going on during that harsh saxophone keyboard sounds. It's a very uplifting song. A Plague of Lighthouse Keepers is a lot more minor key. And like I said, it was the first Van der Graaf Generator song I ever heard. So I just went like head first right into their music. And this, like I said, this is as Van der Graaf as you can get. It's as sinister as Van der Graaf get. It's obviously it's 23 minutes long, which makes it even a bit more difficult to listen to for people who aren't into prog rock or that kind of music. But it was just the opening keyboard melody. Um that just, again, it's seductive. There's something seductive about this whole album, uh, especially Lemmings and A Plague of Light House Keepers. It just draws you in. It just makes you pay attention. There's just something about it. And like I said, it was the first time I'd ever listened to Van der Graaf Generator, and I knew that I'd listened to, like, Yes, um, Genesis, Jeff Hall. I mean, it was nearly five years ago now I got into Van der Graaf Generator, but I got into them a wee bit later than, like, ELP... Pink Floyd, I think I'd heard some Camel before that, 
uh, wee bit of Moody Blues, Rush, obviously. But um, when I heard Van Graaff Generator, Peter Hamill's voice, that keyboard, the sort of key, that keyboard melody that is so beautiful at the beginning of a Plague, Plague of Lighthouse Keepers, that just sucked me in immediately. And I absolutely love the opening section. I love the whole thing, but the first few times I listened to it, that was my favourite part of the song. Then the more and more I listened to it, I liked the whole song as a whole. But that opening, the first few minutes, is just so beautiful. In a sombre, melancholy way, it's sinister and it's mischievous. It's got all these different things going on and it's it makes you feel uneasy. And that's what Van Gogh, so much of Van Gogh Generator, there's Van Gogh Generator's music is intended to do and they do it, they do it perfectly. Um, so obviously I have the vinyl here and... Uh, I think I hadn't listened to the vinyl in ages, but um, it's great to listen to uh, also a twenty minute side on uh, on vinyl. After that, I th we get a wee bit of a kind of more uplifting part, and he goes, "Unreal, unreal, those helmsmen scream," uh, which is really cool. I like that bit. Um, but I suppose the song, I think, I think the song was supposed to be was written as the, as many uh, twenty three minute or twenty minute side songs of prog rock were. I think most of the parts of the song were written as individual songs and then pieced together. Um, one thing I really like is the, the kind of really crazy middle section that goes like do 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 like that. Um, and also the, the sort of bit in, I think it's in 5-8 towards the end of the song. I think David Jack Jackson with that that part, you know, the do 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 that part. I really like that, um, and it has, I suppose, quite a quite an uplifting ending, and the lyrics are about a guy who lives in a lighthouse and he lives alone, and uh, he has let people like ships crash on the rocks, he's let people die, things like that, and he's got all these different get all these different emotions going on. Um, and I think at the end of the song, it's kind of up to the listener to sort of decide their own ending. Um, but I, I, I do like the more uplifting, slightly ambiguous sort of feel that the song has. Because when a song ends really dark, you kind of know it's supposed to be that way. And that's it's got a dark ending. But when a song is dark throughout the most of the song, and it ends in a kind of more uplifting way you're kind of, you're kind of unsure of like how you're supposed to feel which i really like and one thing i was really struck by when i first listened to it was van der Graaff generator's lyrics peter hamill's lyrics uh just how just how like dark and bleak they are um but in such a beautiful way uh, i've never considered van der Graaff generator a depressing band i think there's always hope and it's about sort of um, sort of exploring dark parts of the human mind and things that we, we should try harder to understand and I think that's a very good thing but I'd say Van Graaff Generator might be the first ever emo band I'm not 100% sure I'm not 100 sure if maybe some bands came before that that are kind of similar in terms of their lyrics but Peter Hamill's lyrics if you listen to them in terms of what other prog rock bands were doing at the time uh, obviously King Crimson were doing songs about war but there's lots of songs about war in the late 60s, early 70s but from for like 1970, like a song like Lost on H D He Who I'm the Only One uh, the way it talks the way it talks about like personal, individual feelings um, how like, vulnerable you can be and things like that uh, is very, very personal and it's very emo-ish I'd say, lyrics-wise so Vanagraph Generator might be the first ever emo band, I'm not sure. But A Plague of Lighthouse Keepers is still easily in my top three all-time favourite Vanagraph Generator songs. I just love so many of the melodies. I think the song flows well, um, even as a 20-minute side of, of parts that were sort of put together, uh, that individual songs that were put together. I think it works really, really well. Um, and it deserves to be right up there with... Um, like songs like Supper's Ready and Close to the Edge and Tarkus in terms of uh, how good it is as a prog rock side long epic and um, it might be the first uh, 
prog rock 20 minute song that actually kind of tells a, a short story um, if you know what I mean, like Supper's Ready tells a short story but also this came out in 1971 and I can't think of any 20 minute sides that tell a story um, in that way before Plague of Lighthouse Keepers like there's Tarkus which also came out in 71 but that didn't really tell a story the way a Plague of Lighthouse Keepers did um, Hel In Health Was An Eye from uh, Pro Call Harem there's a song about like the beginning of the universe to the end of the universe but it, it's not like a short story about like a, a much more specific thing so I think that's also very innovative what they did with the Plague of Lighthouse Keepers they told this short story and it's it's very interesting it's sort of like it's sort of like a mini concept in a way um also i like i like that the wee line that shows um i can hear the lemmings coming but i know i'm just a man kind of like a callback to the first two songs on the album anyway that's uh pawn hearts 1971 and um it's one of my favorite albums ever but quite difficult to describe and quite difficult to to sort of talk about it's one of those albums you, you just need to listen to uh but yeah definitely give it a listen if, if you haven't already and if you like Van Graff Generator it's, it's definitely my favourite album of theirs it doesn't have my favourite song, that's Scorched Earth from God Bluff, but it's my favourite album of theirs. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.